What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today's gonna be my 6.5 month update on my hair transplant in Istanbul, Turkey. Now, if you're new to the series, I've done two previous videos, the four month update and the initial hair transplant journey, flying to Istanbul, Turkey, meeting with the doctor, getting the hair transplant, my entire experience. I'll leave those links down below. If you have any questions about the hair transplant, most likely they're gonna be in the first or second video. But I will do a quick brief. The clinic we did a hair transplant at is Dr. Sirkin Agent Clinic. So far, I have nothing but good things to say about the clinic. We did a total number of 4,500 transplanted grafts, which they were harvested from my sides right here, right here, my back, and also my beard which went to my frontal, central, and crown area, and a few in my temples. The hair transplant method that we went with is DHI. Now, if you don't know the difference between DHI and FUE, there's tons of information on it, but essentially it's just the tools they use to extract the hair follicles and implant it to the recipient area or the place that you need new hair grafts. I go into a little more detail in my four month update, but that's essentially it. As far as the recovery, and again, I mentioned that in the second video, but it's not bad at all. I say the worst part is maybe having to sleep upright with a pillow on your neck. Also the swelling. I don't know if I got into that in my second video, but if I didn't, um, your face kind of swells the day or two after the hair transplant. And I don't think there's a way that you can avoid that. That's something that goes along with getting a hair transplant. So if you're gonna get a hair transplant, just know your face is probably gonna be swollen and you're most likely look like a monster. As far as medication and topical solutions, I'm using 5% minoxidil twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. I personally like to use the foam minoxidil. For me, it's easier to rub on my scalp than the dropper liquid. I will say that the liquid minoxidil is cheaper than the foam. I don't know why that reasoning is. Maybe it's because the liquid is kind of messy and a little bit sticky, but essentially they do the same thing. So it's really your preference. I like the foam. It's easier to rub in my hair and not sticky at all. Medication I'm using is a finasteride. I've been on finasteride for, I don't know, like 1.5 years, maybe a little longer, I'm not sure. But I've been on it for quite some time. As far as side effects, I receive no side effects from finasteride. A lot of people experience their loss of libido, their sex drive. I did mention this in my last video and it might affect my libido, why I have such a high or normal sex drive. I do use testosterone. I've been prescribed to testosterone for, I think six years, maybe, maybe a little longer. My usage is 200 milligrams every five days and it gets adjusted via blood work. So keeping that in mind, testosterone does increase your sex drive, me taking finasteride, and me taking finasteride, that may be the reason I don't experience any low sex drive or problems holding an erection, because that is another common side effect from finasteride. So for the duration of using finasteride, I have really experienced no side effects like that. For shampoo and conditioner, I did purchase some DHT blocking shampoo and conditioner. I'll leave the link of what I'm using somewhere on the screen, but I'm just experimenting with shampoos and conditioners to see See if it can help with stimulating new growth or just block a DHT, which is the main culprit of hair loss. Vitamins, I do use biotin, collagen, a regular multivitamin to help promote hair growth to strengthen my hair. But I'll be completely honest with you, I don't know how much of an effect it has on actually stimulating new hair growth or keeping your hair strong, but I'm gonna keep using it. Anything to help repair hair, grow hair, strengthen hair as a supplement, I'll keep it in my daily routine. And now with all that out of the way, I don't wanna make this a super long video. Now to the hair transplant, the results so far. Um, at 6.5 months, I am incredibly happy with the way my hair looks. I will tell you, I feel younger for sure. Like my hairline is lower than it was and it feels good just to not wear a hat unless I'm out in the sun. You know, the Miami sun, Florida sun is very harsh on your skin and on your scalp. And I'm still supposed to be protecting my head from the harsh sun. But for the most part, if I'm indoors or if I'm going from like, you know, inside the car or into a store, I don't wear a hat. So I'm gonna go ahead and get close and show you guys my hairline. And I am super happy with my hairline. It looks a little crazy right now. I have not gotten a haircut uh, since the last time I made the video, but I think it's time for a haircut. Now, let me just pull this back so you guys can see like that. So that's my real hairline. I'm super happy with it. Now I do know you can see a little bit through the hairline, but I think that's how a hairline is supposed to look. You're supposed to be able to see through it, right? I didn't want it to be super thick to where it looks like you got a hair transplant. I wanted something to look more natural. In my eyes, when I see my hairline, 
I think it looks natural. I personally don't think that if you looked at me, you would think that I had a hair transplant, but maybe it's because I'm looking at myself. But at the end of the day, I am happy with my hairline. Now for the central parts of my head, in certain lightings, you can definitely see through it and it looks a little thinner in that area. I'll try to show you with the flashlight right here. Hopefully you can see it. I don't know if I'm blocking the camera, but you can see through it and it's not that bad. I don't think it's bad at all. Even in the sunlight, it's not that bad. You can see a little bit through it, but honestly, like it's probably just me in my head, something that I see nobody else notices. I think it will be a concern in the future if my hair is already thinner in that part of my head. And I did say this in a previous video that if more of my hair goes, I will look at another option of getting a second hair transplant just to fill in those areas. I don't know when that'll be, maybe a few years from now, who knows, but it is an option for me and I would definitely do it again. And let me go ahead and lower this and see if I can turn around and show you guys the back part. So I don't know what I'm looking at, but this is my back part. Um, I'll go like this to see if you guys can see my vortex area, which is this area. It does look pretty nice. I think that's gonna be an area of concern in the future. Hopefully minoxidil and finasteride help to slow that progression down, but it is an area that I am concerned about. And if I do get a second hair transplant, that's exactly the areas that I will fill in, uh, the central part and the crown part. The crown area was my major concern uh, going into this hair transplant. Ooh, let me turn this off. Which is normal for most people getting hair transplant, that's the part they really wanna fill and it's the trickiest part to fill because of the way the hair grows on the scalp in the vortex area. But again, if those areas do progress in losing hair, a second hair transplant will be in the future. So as far as hair thickness and strength, uh, between the four month video and now, I do notice my hair becoming thicker and stronger. When the new hair follicles start to grow, your hair is very weak, it's kind of brittle. It grows without direction. It's just like, it's almost like a, mm, like a pubic hair. And that's only because the new hair is in shock and it needs to strengthen and grow. Now being 6.5 months in, I still do lose hair. It's a little bothersome because I don't know if it's the new transplanted hair or if it's from my original hair. I don't know what it's relating to. It could be stress, testosterone, or just my genetics. But these days I'm really trying to stay stress-free and do everything I can just to prevent any further hair loss. Now I do think this will be the last video until the 12 month updates and that'll be my last hair transplant video an entire year and I'm really hoping to get a little more results. If I don't, I'm 100% satisfied with what I have now. But if I do, that's just a bonus for me. I think I'll get a haircut and I'll try to document that so you guys can see my donor area while it's uh, shorter. Now when my hair was shorter, I didn't see any scars at all and my donor area looked pretty good. I'll give you guys a little quick glimpse. That's my back. My hair is kind of messy. I just woke up not that long ago. And that is my donor area. So that's the 6.5 month update on my hair transplant in Istanbul, Turkey. If you have questions about the clinic, please watch my first and second video. I explain everything there, my experience, the hair transplant, what I looked like, I looked insane. If you guys are curious about the hair transplant yourself, I'm gonna leave all the information below in the description for the clinic that I use. They have a WhatsApp number. You can shoot them a message and take the consultation from there. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys at the one year mark of my hair transplant. Peace, bye.